Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about a couple things that I don't like about the GT. I won't be doing any speculation at all, only going to talk about things that we know about for sure. First off, on the GT we've got a bigger hub, and I'm not going to speculate as to why they made the hub bigger, I'm just going to talk about why a bigger hub is not something that you want to put in between your body and the road that you're riding on. For years, I've been dreaming about what future one wheels might look like. And one of the things that I'm most excited about is that as the motor technology gets better, they'll be able to shrink the motors down and get smaller hubs. And this will allow for more comfort, less pain in your knees, ankles, and feet, more stability through rough terrain, and it will especially improve your ability to ride off-road. The simplest way I can put it is that more hub means less air if you're keeping the size of the tire the same. The GT has a tire that's the same height or diameter as the XR, but the hub is bigger. And that means that you have less air in between you and the bumps in the road. The bigger you make the hub, the closer you get to a bone-rattling nightmare. With a smaller hub, you have more air and the option to lower your tire pressure, either for more comfort, for more stability off-road, to reduce vibration and jolting on your joints and knees. The GT is marketed as a board designed for off-road riding, and if you're riding trails, you generally want low tire pressure so that you can get better traction on loose terrain and soak up uneven terrain instead of jolting or tilting the footpads. Often a rock, bump, or pothole will hit just the left or right side of your tire and knock the board toe side or heel side. If the tire pressure is low enough to just soak it up, your board stays very stable. In terms of volume, the more air you have, the bigger the bumps you can soak up. The problem with a bigger hub is that if you lower your tire pressure, now your hub is at risk of being cracked and damaged by rocks and bumps in the road. Because when that rock sinks into your tire, it just has less distance to go before it hits the hub. And when it hits the hub, it can crack and break the hub. And when you combine this with the added weight of the GT, the problem gets even worse. When I ride trails on my XR, I'm usually riding with a tire pressure that is slightly higher than I prefer, just to be on the safe side of avoiding rim damage. If the rim is bigger, I'm gonna need to run an even, an even higher tire pressure, and I know I said I wasn't gonna speculate, but just one piece of speculation, I do not think I'm gonna like the GT as much as the XR and I think it's a huge mistake to discontinue the XR. But I ride trails and gnarly terrain, and I really care about stability and comfort. If you only ride on smooth pavement and you just want top speed and range, you might not care about the bigger hub. But this next design flaw really highlights that future motion... I think ducks are too noisy. Too noisy ducks. But this next design flaw really highlights the fact that Future Motion did not seek any input or feedback from any of the top one-wheel riders in the community during the design process. They recently said that Tyler James was the first person who was not an FM employee to ever test out the board, and that was just a couple of weeks ago. The problem with not getting any outside input or feedback during the design process is that the Future Motion employees are not really riding and putting on the miles like other people in the community. Of course they ride one wheels, but it's not their main thing. They're snowboarders, surfers, mountain bikers who also happen to enjoy one wheels, but they're not using their vacation days to go to one wheel events like us enthusiasts are. In fact, at the biggest one-wheel event of this year, not a single Future Motion employee even showed up. For people like me, 
yeah, maybe we skate and snowboard and have other hobbies, but our passion is one wheeling. And we just want to make the one wheel better. We want just as much as Future Motion does for them to succeed. And I think it was absolutely a mistake to prioritize secrecy from the community over getting feedback from the community during the design process, or at least from a select group of sponsored riders. As far as I know, Future Motion only sponsors one rider, and even he hasn't even tested out the GT yet. <laughs> And that's one reason why it's so important that we have third-party companies making parts and accessories for the one wheel. Because all of the top riders ride for third-party companies and test the products before they go into production. And these third-party companies, for the most part, are run by people who are actually really passionate about riding one wheels. When it comes to optimizing the frame of the one wheel, the overall geometry, one of the main problems we face is threading this needle between stability and clearance. It's challenging because you want your foot pads low where you put your feet so that your center of gravity is low and that you're more stable on the board. But you want your bumpers high so that they don't scrape the ground. Now, the GT needs more space for more batteries, and if you want me to make a video about where I would have put the extra batteries, let me know. But I will say that the last thing I would have done is to thicken the board vertically, because that does the exact opposite of what we are trying to do to make the board ride better and improve stability and clearance, which is some combination of keeping the feet low and the striking areas high. Some people like clearance, some people like stability. There's a lot of personal preference that depends on your body type and the type of riding that you like to do. But when anybody modifies their board and raises up the foot pads, it's because they're gaining something else, be it clearance, more concave, more cushioning, or uh, just to challenge themselves in a new and exciting way. But when you raise the foot pads, you make the board more top heavy, making it easier to topple over toe side or heel side, especially when you add an extra seven pounds to the board. And when you raise the center of gravity of the person riding the board, make it harder for them to balance and you cause them to fall further to the ground if they do lose their balance. From my perspective, it really just seems like Future Motion wants to focus on what they're good at, which is being a software company. Programming the software that allows the one wheel to ride so smooth. And they are very, very good at making the software. So I don't want you guys to think that I'm just hating on FM, and if you do hate on them, try and remember that uh, they created your favorite thing. That's why you're so bad. If it wasn't your favorite thing, you wouldn't be so upset about the possibility of it being ruined. And the reason that it's your favorite thing is not just that they were the first ones to do it, but because they've been the only ones to create a software that makes the board really rideable. Yes, there are knockoff one wheels, and yes, you can stand on them and transport yourself from one location to another location but the ones i've ridden and i'll be honest it has been almost a year but the ones i've ridden uh they kind of seemed like they were programmed by like a third grader no offense i'm not saying i could have made a better one i am not a software engineer or an electrical engineer uh my expertise is in human body mechanics and the geometry of rideables. But when you focus on the software, you don't necessarily focus on the geometry and the nuts and the bolts. That's why it's so important to support third-party companies who are making parts and accessories for the one wheel, because they're the ones who are making important innovations to the geometry of the board. And that's why I believe that if Future Motion continues to alienate themselves from their strongest supporters, 
They will make it a lot easier for their customers to switch brands when the day comes that there is a viable alternative product. What I see in the community is so crazy because I see an unparalleled amount of loyalty to the product and an equally unbelievable amount of hatred for the company that makes the product. I can't think of any other brand that simultaneously has so much and yet so little brand loyalty. In conclusion, from the hub all the way up to your knees, you basically have no cushion or suspension, except for the air in the tire. So you want a large volume of air, in other words, a tall sidewall, especially if you want to ride effectively off-road. Maybe you have a little bit of cushioning in your foot pads or the soles of your shoe, but again, anything that raises you up also causes some instability and should be avoided if there are better alternatives. The GT's bigger hub and taller platform are design flaws that really highlight the disconnect that Future Motion has from its strongest supporters and speak to the importance of supporting small third-party innovators that embrace the community and are actually really passionate about riding one wheels. Thanks for watching this speculation free review of the one wheel GT. Now go out there and buy up a used XR. Those prices are gonna skyrocket like crypto.